Paul Blue Swimming Pools, home of the Smart Pool up here on the, uh, the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. <coughs> um, if you stop by here, you're obviously uh, interested in, um, in uh, getting a swimming pool installed. And uh, this is just a short series of blogs um, to help you understand uh, how we can build a smart pool today. Um, and this blog's all about how we can improve the circulation in a swimming pool, uh, get better uh, chemical distribution and, and use far less chemicals, uh, get even uh, heat distribution throughout the pool so that the, uh, the water's the same temperature all over, therefore we have less evaporation, uh, less water loss, <coughs> nice pool to swim in, like hot spots and cold spots. So, um, although uh, obviously we're famous for our design of swimming pools, obviously um, off, what often gets uh, overlooked is the, um, how, how we actually build them and I think it's important for consumers to understand what the differences are between the way that we used to build swimming pools and the way that we do now. And so this is just a sh Okay, to get this started, um, basically what we've got along the top here is we've got an illustration of the way that we used to build swimming pools and the bottom we've got the illustration of how we build our smart pools. Basically, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill in the diagram in terms of where the water flows and where it goes. And this will help you better understand um, how we try and filter and sanitise the water. Now, a lot of people just assume that you have to have a filter and a sanitation system, but they don't really know the reason why. And, and simply put, the, the two things that we want to do in a swimming pool is we, is we want to uh, kill bugs. And we want to remove debris. So one, two. So we just remember that the reason that we're trying to um, show you the benefit of having a smart pool is primarily so that we can make better use of our hydraulics and our filtration and sanitation system to remove debris and also to kill the bugs. All right. Well, let's go ahead and. Um, We'll fill in uh, how the water flows on, basically this is a plan view of a pool, so we have steps here, the skimmer box, and this is our pump, our filter and our sanitation system. And on this side we have a section of the pool, so this is actually looking through the pool, or cut through the pool. This is our skimmer, uh, we go down to the deep section of the pool, up to the shallow, and that's our water in the pool. So if we start here on the plan view, the first thing we want to do, um, in all the first, the first probably got these around the wrong way, we, we, we're going to remove the debris and in, in, in the skimmer box in the side of the pool is where we suck the water from, so the water goes in through the skimmer, we have a basket in there that actually catches any leaf litter, so any leaf litter that falls and sits on the surface of the pool gets drawn down to this end of the pool and gets caught in the basket, so that's your first level of maintenance on a swimming pool. This water then travels down and into the pump. In the front of the pump we have a basket in there, so anything that potentially could get through there or if the basket was out, we have a, uh, a basket in here. Now that's not, not so much for, um, for you to be able to remove the debris from, it's more just to protect the pump because we don't want any stones that get through here getting through the pump and anything like that because that can do some damage in your pump. From the pump there, the water goes into the filter uh, the water company, and that's where our, our last layer of uh, removing debris. Now, when we talk about debris here, which I spelled wrong, when we talk about debris here, we're talking about uh, suntan oils, uh, hair, um, you know, discarded sweat, all that sort of thing. So, all those contaminants actually should get filtered out through the swimming pool. Because the last thing we want to be doing is uh, having a bunch of kids swimming in the pool, and then the next day we're feeling it's all greasy and oily. Uh, from there, we go through the sanitation system, and this is where we want to kill the bugs. So basically, in here, um, typically on, a, on your old eighties pool, they'll either have a manual dosing system or a salt chlorination system, and this is where your salt gets um, uh, goes through electrolysis, kills the bugs, produces chlorine, etc. And from here, you send the water back to the swimming pool. Now, on your standard swimming pool, we split the returns into maybe two. So it gets teed in and the returns get to, back to there. So just to outline that diagram here, on the section, we have the skimmer. From the skimmer, we go to the pump. From the pump, filter, sanitation system, sanitation system, back to the pool. Now, that works well and good, provided one, one important thing, and that is that people are swimming in the pool. 
and I outline the reason why. The way water flows, it basically takes its easiest um, route to get from A to B. So any water that we return here, so we've got some beautifully filtered, sanitised, clean water coming back to the pool, and that clean water travels straight back through the end of the pool and through the skimmer bit. So what you can see here is that this water through here is beautifully clean. Now in a section, if we show that too, this water coming back through here, is also beautifully clean. Which poses the question, what happens to this water? And what happens to all this water? Well typically nothing, that water, if there's no one swimming in the pool, this water typically just sits there, unless we've got a lot of wind, or, or unless kids or people are using the pool every day. Now the likelihood of people using the pool every day is really slim. So essentially what happens all through here is we get the build up of algae especially in the corners and the step areas. So here, right through the bottom, we get a build up of algae. Now, in a salt chlorination system, so we have a sanitation with a salt chlorination system that has typically the ability to turn up and produce more chlorine. So what we do as lazy Aussies, we crank that right up to 100% and we try to produce, put as much chlorine through here as we can, so hopefully that chlorine will start to dissipate out to the sides here and start to kill off that algae or bacteria. The reality is, chlorine doesn't go downwards. Any, any highly filtered, sanitised water comes to the top here, and so we have a high concentration of chlorinated water up here. That chlorinated water burns off to the sun, so therefore um, we're introducing a lot more chlorine into the pool it's still not doing its job, it's not getting to the corners of the bottom sections of the pool and this is why you find on 80s style pools that around the corners and the edges we typically get a lot of algae and they require a lot more chemicals to keep them clean. So, it's relatively simple and the easy way that we fix that with a smart pool is with the introduction of a floor suction uh, which is what we have here and you can see in the section down here and floor returns. So if I quickly draw the diagram, and I've got a couple of props that I'll show you as well. So we have two methods of sucking. We actually suck from the skimmer still, but we also suck from the main drain on the, on the pool. So these come back, you get bell or teeth together here, and then through the pump, through the filter, from the filter to the chlorinator, and from the chlorinator, actually goes into what's called a water valve. Now, this water valve, uh, this, this is a three-port water valve, this is what we use for circulation. So the water gets fed into there and it alternates and comes out each of these pipes and it swaps around basically every minute. Now, the reason that we do that is that from there, uh, each minute this one will come out and this one will actually go to a series of floor heads. Now these floor heads are basically a pop-up nozzle. Now here's a pop-up nozzle and you can see each time that pops up it rotates 18 degrees. So every, minute, every second minute that pops up and it pushes out a jet of chlorinated and sanitised water. It goes back down, pops up, pushes it out a jet of chlorinated and sanitised water. To illustrate this we'll just quickly jump over to the section and show you as well. So basically we have a suction coming from the skimmer. We also have a suction coming from the main drain. Let's turn it into a valve. So the water's flowing this way. We go from the pump to the filter, filter to the sanitation system, sanitation system to the water valve, and one of these will come out and feed our pop-up nozzles, which are these, located in the floor of the pool. Generally two or three of them in the floor of the pool. And the other one will come out and it will still feed the returns on the pool. So we have the other side coming out here, which feeds the returns. I'm going to draw that one. Let me get this right for you. <laughs> we want equal pressure on both those 
those uh, returns. So essentially every second minute we're sending water to the floor of the pool and then every second minute we're sending water back up to here. Now that water has just been skimmed, it's been pumped, second le level of uh, removing debris, the third level of removing debris, the oils, the fats, the skin tan lotions, the hair sucked out by the filter, it's been sanitised and then that water gets returned to the floor of the pool. Now the beauty of that is that we're sending filtered sanitised water to all parts of the pool floor. So these areas along the corner here that were previously getting green, and these areas along the floor of the pool, and now not because they're getting filtered sanitised water. So essentially we have filtered sanitised water right throughout the whole pool. So you can see just by uh, sucking some water from the floor of the pool and still skimming and sucking some water from the surface of the pool, returning the water through either the eyeballs at the end of the pool, through the surface and then also through the floor of the pool, that basically we're getting much better circulation. And, and what that's giving us, it's giving us even chemical distribution right throughout the pool. We're not getting large amounts of chemical burn off like we do in the 80s pool, and we're getting even heat dis distribution throughout the pool. So as per previously, we had the hot part of the pool at the top. Now we're sending, uh, we're sucking some water from the top and we're sending it back to the bottom. So in effect, we're, we're mixing it up. And to use a simple analogy, we're, we're basically creating this um, a bit like a washing machine. And if you think about it, it's, uh, it's really similar in that if we put our clothes in the washing machine and we put the powder in and the water in, but if we didn't turn it on, i.e. we didn't mix it up, nothing would get washed. And as soon as we mix everything up, we give our clothes a good wash and they get clean. And likewise with our pool, we give every bit of water in this pool the opportunity to be filtered and sanitised. Therefore, we end up with a lot cleaner body of water. I hope that makes a bit of sense for you. If you've got more questions on it, uh, you can contact us on our webpage. Uh, until then, we'll, um, we'll make sure you stay tuned. We'll be posting more blogs so you can uh, find out more information and uh, about your next, make your next swimming pool a success. Thanks for watching.